Hey, it's Tom from the Kavona team. Uh, today, gonna have a quick look at uh, the Sigo Studios Scratches shader. And uh, I've got a scene here with an HDRI. I've turned it off in the background, but left it as a reflection using the background override in the scene setup. Uh, and it's from uh, HDR Labs. It's a free HDRI. And I am using the uh, Sigo Studio Scratch Shader, and you can see some of the effects that can be achieved. Uh, this is the material, I'll get to that in a minute, I'm actually going to swap back to uh, a very simple material. This is the default uh, settings for the Scratches Shader when you bring it into the scene, and all I've done is plug it into the self-illumination. Uh, that's just so we can see very clearly what it's doing. So this is the default setting. And we can have a look through uh, some of the values. I haven't uh, UV mapped the object. It's the free object from coronamaterials.com. And I've just left the noise set to 3D in this case, which doesn't need UV mapping. If you want to use UV mapping, you can choose the 2D option. So uh, let's take a look through some of these parameters. We'll begin with the size. Um, not surprisingly, this controls the overall size of the map being used. So as I increase it, you'll see that not only do the scratches get larger, but the way they're being mapped is uh, being expanded too, so that we get uh, almost like zooming in on the scratches. So for smaller scratches, you can lower that, and you'll get uh, a much denser application of the scratches and each one will be shorter too. Let's just leave that set to the default for just now. Next are the low and high values. These control uh, when something is counted as a scratch. So if you uh, raise the low value, more and more things will be counted as scratches and they will get more intense. And if you lower the high value, you'll effectively get less scratches and they will get shorter. If I put this back to zero two, you can see they're almost uh, entirely gone. I'll set that back to the default for just now. Levels will effectively control how many scratches you're seeing. If you lower that down, you'll get very few. And as you begin to raise it up, you'll see extra scratches are added with each level. But before we get some new ones, 6 is the default. You can raise that as high as 8 to get more scratches on it. Spread, I like to think of that as being rather like a scratch intensity. As I lower the value, you'll see less scratches become visible, and the ones that are visible get uh, fainter and therefore shorter too. If I raise it up to 1, will get many more scratches visible and will be a, a little more intense. You can mix that with uh, the low value and that lets us have very intense but very short scratches if we raise the low value higher with the spread value lower. And if we bring that back up, lower that back down we get uh, a different distribution in terms of the strength and length of those scratches. Stretch um, controls how the uh, overall map is stretched out across the object. If I lower it, you'll see that the you'll notice that they move. They begin to uh, get adjusted over the surface, and as we ra raise it from the default, the opposite happens. They get more compressed in the surface. Uh, these two values obviously let you control the colors. Let's just set that back to 10. And if you raise the black color, you'll obviously start to see the effect get reduced. And that's another good way of controlling the intensity of the scratches. Uh, erosion is interesting. Let me just zoom in a little on the object. And if you enable erosion, you'll see that the scratches now are not 
solid lines, but they get broken up. And if you increase the strength of that, you'll see that they actually begin to break up altogether. And one's maximum strength. And then the scale factor will adjust how that happens. If we lower that, you can see they're broken up uh, on a very small scale. And as you raise it, they get broken up on a very large scale. Uh, enable the checkbox for that effect or disable it to turn it off altogether. Distortion only works if you feed in a distortion map. Um, I have the pearl and marble here just because I think the effect is fairly clear. It will, in fact, uh, distort the shape of the scratches themselves. And you can see that they're not all straight lines anymore. And as we increase the distortion effect, that becomes even more apparent. Uh, and you can see that at a very high level, this map is now uh, distorting those lines completely. That's useful if you want to break up the noise in some way, though obviously at very high levels it looks less like scratches. Uh, but at low levels it will give you some randomization and variation so that not everything looks like a completely linear scratch. Uh, it does need a map, it has no effect unless you plug a map in. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of these values can have maps plugged in. From the size to the spread to the stretch. Uh, right down to the strength of the distortion, so you could not only have distortion controlled by its own map, but you can vary the strength across the surface too. Now if we flick back over to our uh, metal material, this is just one use of it where I've simply plugged everything into uh, one Corona shader. You could of course use it as a mask and uh, get uh, even different, uh, even more variation so that you could have rust inside the scratches by masking two different corona materials. But this is just a quick look at uh, one simple use of it. Here I've plugged it into the reflection color so that uh, the scratches darken the reflections and I've uh, plugged it into the bump also. You could also plug it into reflection glass in terms of a less metallic material. You could plug it into the diffuse color you could, of course, blend several layers of the scratches together. Uh, and the last effect I'm going to look at, if I zoom in some more, is the uh, bump delta. Low values give you very sharp scratches. If you raise the value up, those scratches do get wider uh, and a little bit more soft at the edges. You can see that there. And um, maybe if I raise the bump some in the corona material, it might be even more obvious. In this case, I've lowered it down to 0 0.005. Bring that up. Come back in here, and uh, there's a value of 1 and a value of point not not 1. You can see those scratches become thinner and much more sharply defined at the edges. So that's just a very quick introduction. Um, a lot of things you can do with this shader. Uh, a lot of different ways to be able to use it. Uh, and uh, very well worth exploring, particularly as a, as a free shader. So um, give it a look, give it a try, and uh, it should add a lot of extra realism to your materials without too much in the way of hard work. Thank you.